in the Caribbean community, uh, we have uh, watched on our on our cable TV systems the the murder of Mr. Garner choked to death by the hands of police officers. And now we have witnessed the murder of Mr. Floyd at the knee of a police officer face driven into the concrete until life had departed. In the Caribbean, we have watched with horror the sheer evil involved in these acts of the greatest criminal in humanity. There has been a tendency to imagine that these are American phenomena and that there are in some ways alien to our Caribbean world. That the circumstances leading to these tragic developments are really none of our affair except at the level of humanity and its concern for all fellow human beings. As historians, we have a responsibility to connect the dots and to show that indeed, these developments, the recent expression of the loss of George Floyd from our family, is indeed a Caribbean cause. The struggle is a Caribbean struggle. And it's important to look at the context within which all of this has occurred. When the Europeans took 15 million of our ancestors out of Africa, destroyed their families, destroyed their individuality, destroyed their culture, dragged them across the Atlantic and scattered them through the Americas. With the lion's share of that trade in, in chain bodies focused on the Caribbean world. We have to recognize that the colonies of the United States, from the point of view of the enslavement of African peoples, that it really was a Caribbean project that was transported into the United States. It was in the Caribbean that Britain, the first European nation to declare in constitution and law that African people are not human beings, that African people are chattel, property, and real estate. This was a British legal invention that was developed specifically for the Caribbean. And it was implemented in the Caribbean islands, Barbados, Jamaica, and St. Kitts as the epicenter of this business model. It was this business model which the British developed for the Caribbean in which African people were constructed as a commodity. It was this model that was transplanted into South Carolina. And South Carolina 
became the first American colony that was built entirely upon the enslavement of African peoples. And South Carolina became the first colony in America where Africans were the majority. It is not surprising that South Carolina was therefore created by the Caribbean slave owners. The slave owners of Barbados and Jamaica were given royal access to that space called South Carolina and transported the Caribbean slavery world into the US as a business proposition that you can build an entire economy upon enslaved labor. So the movement of that economic system into the US, where it grew to maturity and expanded, began in the Caribbean. So we were there at the beginning. From South Carolina, it spread across the United States so that those colonies building themselves upon the economics of enslaved Africans were doing so in the context of a model that originated in the Caribbean and was migrated into the United States. The Americans fought for their war of independence and their war against the British. And they had a golden opportunity to build the new vibrant nation on the basis of freedom and democracy for all. But they chose instead to build the nation upon a foundation of slavery, develop freedom for all white people and slavery for all black people. That was the foundation on which the United States was built. A democracy as they called it, a democracy for the few, slavery for the majority. Because freedom and slavery could not coexist comfortably in the same space. A hundred years later, they had to go back to the, ban the, the battlefield in the Civil War to litigate this problem, that you cannot build a free democratic society on the basis of slavery. They went back to the Civil War and fought one of the bloodiest wars in human history to make that point pollusively clear. But they replaced slavery with the Jim Crow or what we call apartheid. And for another hundred years, following slavery, we had racial apartheid based on the principle that had been there from the beginning, that black people are not humans, that they are property, real estate, and their role is to provide labor within the economy and society. So what we witness in Minneapolis was the legacy of this tradition. But we also must bear attention to the, the fact that there is another legacy that Caribbean folks have long been involved in the affairs of the United States because we have always seen the islands and the mainland as interconnected, dialectically bound, working through the same historical processes. So we in the Caribbean have always seen our role in facilitating the liberation of black people, north and south. And therefore, when Marcus Garvey departed Jamaica 
the Caribbean. To go into Harlem and headquarter what will become the greatest black civil rights movement of all times, dedicated to the upliftment of the dignity of the black person. When he departed the north coast of Jamaica into the heart of New York to spread a movement across the United States and across the world, dedicated to the upliftment of the black soul and the black dignity, that we understood from then that what was happening to the black people of America was a Caribbean concern because we have been connected by history and circumstances. Then with the passing of Marcus Garvey and Martin Luther King Jr. taking responsibility for this movement of uplifting the dignity of the black people against a history of the legacy where we are treated as property, real estate, non-human and animals of a sub-nature, he would come back to the Caribbean to renew his soul. And all, all of that moment when they were trying to take his life, he would retreat to the Caribbean. He would come to Jamaica. He would then fill his lungs with fresh air, rebuild his confidence, refocus his spirit, and from Jamaica, he would return to the mainland to continue that struggle. And therefore, Marcus Garvey went north. Martin Luther King came south and forged that inevitable bond of our commitment. We have seen this also with Malcolm X who was raised in a West Indian household because his parents with that West Indian upbringing infused in him those values that as a matured man, he should take wider responsibility. Again, another Caribbean intervention. And so when Bob Marley, the Buffalo soldier, when he wrote those songs within the tradition of the Garvey and the King legacy, that we must get up, we must stand up, we must defend our dignity. Bob Marley, and with his lyrical genius, was building upon a foundation, a long foundation, in which all of the African family was bound together. And so, when that policeman placed his knee at the throat of Mr. Floyd, It was reminiscent of all of those images that we have seen across the United States of black men and black women and black children hanging from trees with ropes around their neck, gasping for breath until it was all gone. As historians, we have not had to wait on the television spectacle to understand this. The documents in the archives from New York to Minneapolis, to Miami, to Kingston, to London, the archives are filled with the documentation of these acts of the extinction of black life, where the taking of black life became a cultural game it became a social sport. And this is why when this police officer is kneeling with a sense of authority upon the throat of Mr. Floyd, kneeling into his throat with his hand in his pocket, balance and poise, as if speaking to a gallery, as if speaking to an audience, triumphant, celebratory, like a fisherman 
who holds his catch of the day high and above, showing to the world, look what I have caught. This officer, so postured, was celebrating his triumph. And together as a hunting pack, together as a hunting pack, taking their prey to the ground and watching the last fluttering breath of life removed from their prey. Like a fish fluttering upon the fisherman's deck, fluttering until it can flutter no more. This was the evil that can never be accepted in a world filled with human beings. That's the kind of evil from a place called hell that has penetrated into the human existence and is determined to convert all of us into precisely what the British did, define us as non-human, property, and real estate. That all of us who was forced to view on a virtual landscape, live and direct, in a theatrical fashion, all of us were called upon to witness share evil, evil beyond hit, on display as a 21st century spectacle. No longer the world of the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries of slavery, but a 21st century spectacle that is in the direct lineage and legacy of that world that continues to exist in our historical moment and time. It is therefore for us not a matter to view over the boundaries of a nation in which we in the Caribbean say, this is an American problem. This is not an American problem. In any event, if it is an American problem, it is partly of a Caribbean creation because the Caribbean was where that world was first hatched. We all must see this as our problem. Marcus Garvey knew exactly the struggle to which he was going to dedicate his life in every colony of the United States. He was there calling for the dignity of the black soul. Malcolm X understood that. Martin Luther King understood that. Bob Marley, all of the great Caribbean minds understood that those experiences in the United States are domestic to us. And so we now, we now understand, we now understand that when two big African American men, Mr. Garner, magnificent strapping man, Mr. Floyd, large, enormous, magnificent strapping man, brought down to their knees and onto their bellies on the ground by police officers and their lives snuffed out, that that was a dramatic process. That was a theatrical process by which you hunt wild animals, throw the net over them, drag them to the ground, take your knife or your knee or your hands and take the life out of them. They can flutter until they are dead. The world saw this. The world saw that this was the evil 
that Marcus Garvey and Martin Luther King wanted to eradicate. It is a legacy for all of us. It is an American crime. It is a Caribbean cause. And it's a global struggle. It might have happened, captured by the electronic eye. But what that electronic eye captured, the archives, the archives of the world are filled with this kind of experience. So we give thanks for the electronic eye for opening for us the door to a bigger world, the endemic pandemic culture of taking black life as a cultural game, as a social sport. This is going to be the great struggle facing us going forward. This is going to be the struggle that humanity would have to wage if this 21st century, this long 21st century ahead of us is going to be a livable space, livable at the threshold of humanity at its best, of morality on display. Thank you.